there are many who are bashing the Fed for QE2, and it's certainly going to be a sticking point in the discussions at the G20 this weekend. But the policy certainly is accommodating for the credit markets. Investors are betting there will be no near-term run-up in rates, so are taking more risk to get higher yield. Bloomberg Best, Guy Ba is chief fixed income strategist at Jenny Montgomery Scott. He is joining us now on with some ideas of what to do with your fixed income dollars. Guy, thanks so much as always for joining us. You've said there's a lot of money going into high yield corporate markets. Just how much? I mean, is it possible to quantify? It's very hard to quantify the dollar amount, but of course, as interest rates and yields in many of the sectors of fixed income markets have declined over the course of the last year to 18 months or so, we've seen what we call yield chasing. People essentially taking their dollars that used to be in lower risk investments and buying into the high yield markets, particularly the double B rated type credits that are maybe some of the bigger names here in the U.S. So what if you're just the average person, you want to have some mon money in bonds? I mean, how do you know when this is getting too frothy? Well, I think one of the things that's kind of key here is what we call the wall of debt that's maturing between 2011 and 2015. And here's really what that is. Between 2005 and 2007, when the credit markets were very, very open to new issuance, high-yield corporations, those rated below triple B, were issuing a lot of debt. And a huge amount of that debt matures really between 2011 and 2015. And that's where we start to see kind of the risks creeping up because it may be challenging for some of these issuers to be able to refinance and issue new debt to pay off the old debt. So that's there's the biggest a, risk in the market right now. So there's a, a lot of supply out there as well. Any statistics that you can show a little bit how this is playing out, say, this year versus 2009? Sure. So about 18 months ago, we first did a study on the topic, and we uncovered that there's about a trillion dollars of high-yield bonds and loans maturing between 2011 and 2015. Now, since that time, about 18 months ago, issuers have restructured, and many have defaulted, and as a result, that wall of debt has actually shrunk a great deal, shrunk about 12 percent. So increasingly, all these maturities that were problematic are starting to be sort of worked through by the markets and by issuers. So we're growing actually increasingly optimistic that there won't be as much of a problem in the high yield markets as we once feared. So, Guy, I want to make a, a shift from sort of this bigger picture to taking a look at GM. We've been talking about the company. It's going to be reporting in just a few moments' time. Does it concern you at all as far as the IPO that the value is less? Is that going to change the way that its bonds trade? Sure. Well, one of those issuers that restructured that did have some debt coming due in 2011 through 15 was actually GM. And, of course, they declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy and defaulted on their bonds. Bondholders, as part of the restructuring, will receive a 10 percent stake in the new GM. Sort of once at IPOs, they'll be able to obtain some of that stake. And we estimate, based on the IPO range, that bonds should be worth and are kind of trading in the range of about 31 to 37 cents on the dollar for the issuer. But we still feel there's a little bit of opportunity in these defaulted GM bonds as a way to play into the IPO. So what do we need to see, Guy, just quickly here from GM for us to take advantage or the average investor to take advantage of the opportunity that's there? Well, I think what we need to see for GM is a greater focus on a few core brands and expanding the model lines in those brands. Unlike Ford, kind of their greatest U.S. competitor, GM's brands have been a little bit more concentrated in a few names, and their vehicles have been sort of focused on sales in one or a few sectors. And I think we really need a little bit greater diversification of their vehicle sales in order for the bond markets and the equity markets to get long-term comfortable with their prospects. Guy, thanks as always. Guy Labad joining us there. He is from Johnny Montgomery Scott. He is a Bloomberg best.